everybody welcome back to second street i hope you're all having a very good day today trinity here thank you so much for being here on the channel thank you i hope you all had a very good day hope you had a great weekend hope you had a very good memorial day um just kind of a long weekend i know i didn't even go live yesterday but i did drop a video hopefully you guys went and checked out my review for aftershock comics out of body issue number one an absolutely great great book one of my um uh, one, one of my uh, favorite publishers here uh, putting out this new series and I gotta say I thought it was pretty dang good make sure that you do go back and check out that uh, comic book review that I dropped yesterday now uh, today I am going to show off some of the comic books that I brought home from the comic book shop this week and do some quick fire reviews on those as well as we are going to do an aggressive unboxing live that's right, guys. Make sure if you are here, make sure that you hit that like, that like. Make sure that you share this video out with your friends and tell them all to come hang out and help and join in and acquire their Myrtle bit. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into some of these comic book reviews that I have here for you today. Now, a couple of the books that I won't be talking about today that I did pull um, that I brought home is uh, the first one will be White Lily. This is issue number four of five. Now, I have this uh, series already. I've got uh, every single one of these. This was originally a crowdfunded comic book uh, being written uh, by Preston Poulter. Um, I backed that one when it was one of the crowdfunded books uh, through uh, through Kickstarter. So yeah, it's a pretty good series. I do end up liking it. Probably going to end up maybe doing a giveaway or something with some of these books. Now, the next one that we've got here is uh, on Oni Press. That's Dryad issue. I want to say, is that nine? Um dryad issue number 10 dryad issue number 10 and this is where i'm going to be not pulling the series anymore anyway after issue number 10 i think i've got uh one through 10 and that's pretty much uh going to be it for me but uh yeah so let me know what you guys if you guys have read white lily let me know what you think about it down in the comments below also if you have read dryad let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below as well and <clears throat> let me see how is okay I'm double checking my microphone, my microphone because there was a there was an update that just happened uh, last night, and I haven't got to go through and recheck everything. And it looks like it looks like everything's uh, going pretty okay here. Me, I think. There we go. All right, maybe that's it right there. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit better. Not peaking. Not. I don't know. Let me know if you guys are here. What you think? All right, there we go. Is that a little bit better? Uh, it seems like that should be a little bit better. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into some of these new comic books that I do have uh, here uh, to review. Like I said, I did review Out of Body issue number one already. Um, here, this book is absolutely great. Peter Milligan. Um, I've only read in one other series that I know of right off the top of my head by Peter Milligan. It was American Ronin on uh, after on AWA on AWA Upshot. Um, very good book. And this one right here, Out of Body, is uh, another one by Peter Milligan. Kind of about like this guy wakes up. Um, it's, well, it's an out of body experience. It's going to be like a sci fi thriller. Uh, you can see that uh, th there's this guy. He's trapped in this. He's, he's in this hospital. He's in a coma. He's in a coma, but he's conscious. At least he thinks he is. And he's trying to communicate with everybody. He has uh, really no means to do it. Uh, meanwhile, there is a psychic out there who has abilities able to uh, communicate with dead people. And that's one of the things, uh, she's one of the people that he ends up coming across um, in his journey through the afterlife. And she ends up kind of coming across him. Now, she's obviously going to help him uh, foster his way into the afterlife. Or is this man going to live while trying to figure out the mystery of who tried to kill him? Uh, issue number one, I thought was really good here. Um, again, written by Peter Milligan and Naki Miranda, Ava De La Cruz on the, the art here. I'll show you. Let me see if I can show you a good, uh, a good picture of some of the art going on in this book. Um, a good, yeah, you know what? I don't know. There we go. I think these p couple pages right here have enough uh, good stuff in them for you to check out. The art style, the colors in here uh, done very well. Ava De La Cruz. Did just a great job on this book. One I definitely uh, highly recommend, and I did recommend it in the review that I dropped yesterday here on the channel. So make sure uh, that you go check out that review. 
Now, the next one that I have to talk about here is one that came out last week that my uh, my LCS, it was shorted for whatever reason. Stuff happens. Uh, but this is another one on Aftershock Comics. This is I Breathe the Body, issue number five, written by Zach Thompson with art by Andy McDonald, colors by Triona Farrell, and lettered by Hassan Otsmani El Hau. Now, uh, this book is kind of like telling this uh, this story here. It's about... It's really a lot about uh, social media conglomerates and how they just kind of how they operate and their culpability towards the public uh, at large. You know, just some of the things that they're responsible for. Uh, one of the some of the things they do, you know, trying to keep your attention, the attention economy and what it's all about. Now, at the back of this book, there is a nice little uh, letter here. Um, from the creators of this book as well, um, from Andy McDonald and Zach Thompson here uh, at the end of the book, kind of explaining uh, some of that stuff and telling you thank you for reading this book. Now, I Breathe the Body, issue number five here. Um, I'm definitely going to have to go through and read all five of these books again and do a more in-depth review on these because if you've never read Zach Thompson's work, he's a very how do you say heady writer? Like you read stuff like you've really got to get invested in it. And um, it's not that it's hard to understand. It's just that sometimes it will get really, really thick with uh, just things to kind of think about everything that's kind of going on and what's going on with uh, how, how it pertains to the story and just kind of everything at large. I mean, like, like it's really, they're really kind of big. I can't say they're like big epic tales, but the way that you have to take them in, it's very, um, it's very, you know what, it's, it's, I can't even say it's not digestible, but you definitely like, you know what, it's easily digestible, but I guess it's like this, you got to chew your food, you got to chew your food and make sure you chew it good so your stomach can break it down uh, a whole lot easier. And that's kind of what this, uh, this series is like, especially a lot of Zach Thompson books is they're really, they really do make you think, and you kind of gotta, you really gotta kind of go over them and kind of get into it. Um, you don't just read uh, a Zach Thompson book uh, like you would, you know, like maybe the latest issue of Spider Man, where you're sitting there just kind of like, oh, this planet is entertaining, and kind of flipping through it and getting through it like that. You don't do that. You don't, you don't, you don't flip through a Zach Thompson book in like five minutes. They take some time to really sit down and read and see what's going on. Um, again, I Breathe the Body, a very good series, but let me know down in the comments below if you've read I Breathe the Body, and if you have, what you think about this series, or even this writer. Uh, I'd like to hear all your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, the next one I want to talk about is on another one of my favorite publishers, and that is AWA Upshot. Whew, man, this is a good one. This is Moths, issue Number one of six. I got both of these covers here. Uh, the one of them. Uh, this one is by the Kari Andrews. Is the uh, alternate cover and the main cover here done by Mike Choi. I'll show you both of those again without some glare on them. Hopefully, there we go. Um, definitely very good stuff. Now, Moths is actually uh, telling the story. When we get into this first issue, uh, telling the story about this uh, young woman named Emily Kai. And she is a moth. Now, what moths are is they are these uh, the people within the AWA Upshot universe after the resistance, in case you ever read that. Um, these uh, moths are basically these... Uh, they're basically these reborns uh, who after this pandemic that swept the world and infected many it killed a lot of people Some people inherited powers. Some people don't know what their powers are They just kind of go on uh, go on through life until you know Just finding finding out what they are a lot of times through accident and stuff like that You know, maybe through stress or duress anything like that is how they find a lot of these things out Well, they have these one particular set of people aside from reborns. They have these ones called moths and when you're a moth what that means is that you have these special latent abilities uh, as a moth. And the thing is, like, you have these abilities, but you trigger them. You can activate them. You may not know what your purpose is. You may not know what your power is. But as a moth, when you know you've got the power of a moth, what happens is once you activate your powers, you only have six months to live. And you basically kind of... I wouldn't say you explode, but you kind of maybe implode or you just, you, you die at that point. Um, after kind of fulfilling uh, your, your, your 
abilities and what you're supposed to do uh, with your power. Uh, and that's kind of what Moths here is telling about uh, here in issue number one, telling about uh, this, this first story about one of our characters, Emily Choi here. Now, this book is being written by J. Michael Straczynski. It's got art by Mike Choi. He did the art and the colors and it lettered by Sal Cipriano. I'll show you those. I'll show you those names there. You can see some of the see some of the art there with that picture there that looks like does that not look like Randall Park? Doesn't that look like Randall Park in that picture? Tell me that don't look like Randall Park. Yeah, it does. It does, and it kind of looked like Clarissa on there too, Melissa Joan Hart. Anyway, um, this story is telling about uh, is telling about this uh, this particular moth here in this in this very first series and how uh, Emily is going and seeking out friends and seeking out a good safe place for her to unlock her moth abilities before she goes and uh, basically ends her life uh, and only has six months to live. Now the thing that's tricky here is once you're a moth and you kind of reveal your powers and all these kinds of things, the government's after you because if you have these powers, if you're one of the reborns, especially a moth, they want to get you in control, find out what your abilities are, poke and prod you and experiment on you and all of those different kind of things. Really what you can think about when you think about the resistance uh, on AWA Upshot, think of it like it's similar to like the X-Men in the Marvel Universe. Similar, it's not quite like that, but it's very similar uh, in that sense where you know, they're kind of outcast. People don't like them. People don't want to uh, mingle with them. They don't want to mess with them. They know uh, maybe the dangers that they possibly present. And of course, what do they do? They scared of that. Um, again, Moth's a very, very good book. Um, and I think Mike, Mike Choi's uh, art in here is really good as well. I'll show you a little bit more. Now, the one thing I will say, and I noticed this in several of the AWA Upshot books, um, as as well, it, oh, you can even see like right there. Harvey Keitel is in this. Is one of the things they definitely do is they definitely use um, face models. The, a lot of the artists, they definitely. I'm not sure if they're just using uh, filters when they go and do this, or if they're actually drawing all these. But some of the art throughout this book looks like some of it's a uh, photo with a filter laid over it, and then you just add some details, and then some of it you can really tell is actually hand drawn. Now, I'm not going to be one to sit here and tear it all up. Um, I do get that a couple of things. AWA Upshot is a relatively new company. They have been out for, the, uh, for, for a little over a year now. <clears throat> They've been cranking out some very good books as far as the story is told and as far as a lot of the art is concerned. Now, I'm not saying that they go out there and tell people like, hey, do what you can to hurry up and get these things done on time. But I do think the artists do things to maybe take shortcuts to try to get things done in a more timely manner. I've noticed this in several of the AWA Upshot books, and it's nothing I'm going to nitpick about, but something I will definitely say when it comes to uh, the art style is that, you know what, like, like, I can let a lot of this kind of stuff slide, that's fine, but when you go through there and actually do the drawing, do the work, uh, in a lot of, like, a lot, because a lot of it's in backgrounds, a lot of it's in backgrounds, it's not necessarily the characters, but... I think a lot of the drawing that these artists actually do if they weren't under such uh, maybe uh, time, uh, such intense time constraints is the art is a lot better when you actually hand draw a lot of this stuff um, and it doesn't stand out to me as much uh, in, in some of these instances. Now, <clears throat> the one thing I could um, that, that I will show you like that really kind of got me was like uh, right here in this uh, in this photo right here I was just kind of showing you a minute ago. You can see in this in this one right up here. Uh, see how the photo there? It almost you know it almost looks like the actor who plays uh, Daisy on uh, on Agents of Shield. All of a sudden, I forgot her name, and uh, it kind of looks like her with a photo filter put over. And a lot of this photo actually looks like that. And then you get down into this next panel right below it, and you can see how much more um, a lot of it actually looks drawn. And it's when it's when you see one right next to the other that it really starts to stand out. If they were on separate pages, I probably wouldn't notice it as much. But altogether, I think this series is still pretty good. A lot of these books are good. Again, AWA Upshot has been doing a pretty good job. I'm not trying to um, tear them apart or any of the artists or anything like that because they have been doing a very good job. But again, just little, just 
tiny little things that I'm sure that I'm not the only person who notices this stuff. But let me know down in the comments below if you have uh, if you have or are going to read moths on AWA Upshot. It is definitely part of the Resistance and their shared universe. A very good series. Uh, speaking of the Resistance, I actually just recently sent out a copy of Resistance uh, Volume 1 to one of the uh, channel members here. A great, uh, great supporter of the channel. Obi-Wan the homie. I hope he got that in and I hope he got a chance to read that book already. Um, a very, very good series. A lot of these AWA Upshot books. I do um, believe in the titles are doing so. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below before we get into this next book right here on Dynamite Comics. Now, you guys know I don't read a whole lot of Dynamite Comics myself. Uh, matter, matter of fact, ooh, whoops. Matter of fact, one of the things I've been doing, um, a lot of the Dynamite books, I buy for covers, right? I buy for, I'm willing to admit that. I buy a lot of these books for covers when it comes to the Dynamite books. Uh, like, honestly, Deja Thoris, never read the comic book. Never read the comic book, not once. <laughs> and I believe me, I own numerous copies because Joseph Michael Linsner does the covers on those. And they, like, he does other covers as well, like for Red Sonya and some others as well. But when he does... The Deja Thoris books, they're absolutely fire, and I love those. Speaking of which, I've got, got, got that statue over there. I still got to drop the video for. But, uh, so, a lot of books are, are cover buys, and you know what? Shame on you if you shame people for cover buys, especially shame on you if you're shaming people for buying smut cover buys, you know, that have boobies and all that kind of stuff, and the comic books that have all the boobies and all the pornographic kind of stuff. Look, it's an art style, right? People like art, and a lot of times that's what people get in uh, get into art because it's a visual medium. You like provocative art. I don't care who it is. Chances are you do. Now, getting into this, uh, this first one I have here on Dynamite, and only one I have is the Invincible Red Sonia. This is issue number two, and take a look at this beautiful cover here by Elias Chautsudis. This book is absolutely. I look at that cover. Now I actually have to go back to the LCS because I realized I forgot I forgot to pick up. I thought it was a Perio cover they were showing me, but I got to get the Carla Cohen variant in case you guys were here last month when this series premiered. That issue number one with that Carla Cohen variant was just so beautiful. Her art style was really good. Like the fo like the picture itself looked like an actual photo. It looked like an actual photo, um, almost similar to maybe what I was, like I was talking about in this other series where it looked like a photo and they maybe went and did some coloring in it, but it looked that good. I thought it was an actual photo and I seen it was drawing. I'm like, ooh, getting it, getting it. Um, so I've got to go back and get this, uh, get that. Now, this book right here is written by Jimmy Palmiotti and uh, Amanda Connor. Um, it's got art by Moritat and colors by Matt Carter, letters by Dave Sharp. Uh, I got to say, this book is actually pretty good. Now, I've been reading uh, uh, The Sumerian on Ablaze Comics. Very good stuff. Uh, this right here, this series, uh, Red Sonia, it kind of really reminds me of that, of, you know, like Conan, the Sumerian, and definitely you could say that Red Sonia and Conan are definitely um, closely, closely related, tied together uh, as far as their characters and stuff like that. Um, I really did think this, like, again, most of these I buy for covers. Most of these I buy for covers, but I actually got in here and been reading this story, these first two issues, and it's actually a pretty good story. It's got some very good art. And that cover again by Elias Chapsudis is absolutely fire. You got the, you know, the other one I'm gonna be picking up, I'll show you guys later. I'll post a picture on my Instagram or something of the photo uh, from uh, Carla Cohen as well. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful stuff. And again, I don't really read the Invincible Red Sonia, you know, like I'm kind of into these medieval fantasy tales of people going around and, you know, fighting and battling. I'm into that kind of stuff. Um, but this book, I thought it was really, really good so far for the first two issues and especially not being like a big fan of like Red Sonia or following any of her stories or really knowing much about the character. I thought it was really good. I think it's been a really good read uh, so far. Now, the next one we've got here is on Floating World Comics right here and this is night hunters issue number four of four and guys this one i have to do 
um, I'm going to have to sit down and do some really more in-depth reviews on. This book is absolutely great. Um, the art by Alexis Zirit, uh, written by Dave Baker, lettered by Robert uh, Negrete, um, inside back cover by Matt Wallace. But uh, I'll show you those names right here. This book is kind of a futuristic cyberpunk tale where uh, there's been uh, kind of like fallout and it's taking place in, I want to say Argentina. And uh, there's been just like the government is, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's controlling people saying we're, uh, basically it's, it's a totalitarian uh, government that they're living under. And it's pretty crazy. This story going on here, we kind of get these, uh, this deep dive of these characters are two main characters here in the story. Now there's more, but these two main ones, uh, who actually end up being people who grew up together, who were good friends together, who had a lot of experiences. One of them ended up joining the police force, while the other one ended up becoming the leader of the rebellion of the people trying to uh, help uh, help free uh, their people uh, in this country. Uh, it's talking about a lot of stuff in this book uh, through a very entertaining and futuristic lens. Now, I think that's something that happens in a lot of books uh, like this. You know, you get into the dystopian uh, type uh, futures and just things like that. And, uh, you know, just thinking about all these things. Um, it follows a lot of those same kinds of things. And it follows a lot of those same kind of tropes, but it's a much different story. And the way that they went, uh, Dave Baker went through and told the story, man, I absolutely love this. Now, the art in this book is like, look, the art in this book, it's not the best. Like, I, I like seriously, this art, you can find better art out there, more highly detailed art and everything. Coloring, you can find more uh, detailed, more colors, people using a wider uh, range color palette and stuff like that. But this book, uh, some of the things that you'll find in a lot of those books, you won't find a story with as good of a substance that has a good meaning, that's telling a great story like this book right here. Night Hunters, uh, what was it, $4.99. It's got a little bit thicker cover. Now, the one thing I will say, something I've been talking about here on the channel, something I was talking about the other day with a book that came out um, on Behemoth Comics, which was uh, You Promised Me Darkness, is newsprint. If you're doing, okay, look. I realize that nobody comes to watch my fucking videos, okay? Nobody's here. There's not no fucking comic publishers here doing this shit. Writers, like anybody give a shit about what I'm saying? I fucking doubt it. But if you are listening, if you are a comic publisher, if you are a writer out there putting together a comic book and you are going to do it a black and white comic book, put it on newsprint. I have a color book here. This is in color. It's on newsprint. It's okay. You doing a black and white book? Just put it on newsprint. Doing that stuff where you put it on some of this other nicer, fancier paper, it looks like trash. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. Take take a lesson from the folks at Floating World Comics. Put that newsprint in there. It's okay if you even put colors on there. It's okay. Last week, I think it was last week, I got one from Source Point Press that was the same thing. It was in color. It was on newsprint. I'm okay with that for certain things with the newsprint being in black and white being only a few colors. That's absolutely fine if you've got a great story. And here is the thing. You get stories like this, like Night Hunters, that you have a great book that makes me get done reading this book. And I'm like, fuck yeah, right? You get these kind of books, but you know what? They don't dress, they're, they're not churching this up. They're not putting the fancy cover on. They're not putting the fancy pages, all kinds of fancy colors. You know what they're relying on? Good storytelling. Maybe we could start there. Then we'll start talking about newsprint and colors and all of that stuff. Let's start with good storytelling like Dave Baker did right here in Night Hunters. Man, I got worked up over that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, this book is a really good book. Uh, you get very, very, it seems like so rarely uh, I get books in anymore these days. Uh, or they're, I, I guess not rarely, but they're fewer and far between where I get done reading a book. I'm like, hell Yes, this is a great story, telling a great, like, everybody needs to read this book. It's that good. It's that good. Four issue miniseries. Uh, I can guarantee you, just based off of this floating rolled comics, you guys put out a book, you got my money. You got my money. Now, 
Moving on. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Make sure that you check your Myrtle bit. Uh, make sure that you smash that like button. Make sure you invite all of your friends. Because we're going to be doing a giveaway soon. We're going to be giving away a copy. The signed copy of Baby Teeth. Issue number 17. There's going to be more to go with it. But to be here, you're going to have to be here in the live streams. Be hanging out and acquiring Myrtle bit. So make sure that you do that. You acquire, acquire Myrtle bit by hanging out here on the live streams. Hanging out in the live chats and chatting. Maybe liking this video and sharing it and stuff, right? Also for being subscribed and being one of the immortal Myrtle Maniacs. We all know you're one of the Myrtle Maniacs anyway. Why not become immortal? You can do it. Come on. Do it. Now, this last book that I want to get into before we get into an aggressive unboxing here is on Z2 Comics, guys. Uh, in case you guys don't know, I absolutely love music. I'm a metalhead, especially when it comes to a band like Anthrax. I have an Anthrax hat too, even. I love the band Anthrax, band that has uh, definitely been there uh, since my childhood, uh, my uh, through my teen years and everything in between. One of my favorite thrash bands of all time. Okay, my favorite thrash band of all time, and that is Anthrax. And one of their albums that they put put out man can you believe it's been like 30 years ago yeah it's been like <clears throat> nearly 30 years it was like 25 it's probably at least easily 25 years ago that they released their uh their second album with singer joey belladonna entitled among the living and now z2 comics has helped them put out this right here this is among the living anthrax this is a graphic novel right here adaptation of their book of their album among the living a very 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 great album now among the living i mean you think about the title and even the opening song among the living and kind of the theme of the album it was kind of inspired by stephen king's the stand and uh so very very interesting stuff and there was one of the songs very much about based on the movie the stand it also has stuff inspired by judge dread um also what's the other one uh the one apt pupil from stephen king i'm very much inspired by that but this right here is actually an adaptation of that album and uh, you can uh opening it up here you can see uh they've got a lot of the creators uh drawn here their faces you can see all the members of anthrax in there you see Corey taylor down there by my pinky right here uh you got some of the uh I, i'm not sure who this is but like right up here uh, you got, oh, what's his name? Grant Morrison. Um, just some of the different uh, characters that they, uh, people, contributors, I guess, that put into this book. Uh, you get in here, I mean, they've got uh, just some reimagined art, all kinds of great stuff. Now, the thing is, is this book, when you get in here, um, it talks here about these contributors and everything. This book, when you get in here, they actually have a story for each and every one of there uh, of the tracks for the album in this book so you get in here the first one it's going to open up. oh look at this look at this the not man reimagined beautiful 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 so um you get in here and uh they have like uh right here they have these little intro pages right here the not man cometh tells you who was written by jimmy palmiotti uh, art there by who's who's the art on the art there on that one Nelson. Okay, now uh, you got got this black and white story kind of giving you an introduction to that. Then you get here into the main tracks. Track one, among the living, right? The cool thing about here is you get into these stories, and these stories are basically all kind of inspired by the album and the tracks and everything. the The other cool thing is like these stories, they're almost like. Those, remember all those great music videos back in like the 80s? Like, you remember all those cool ones like David Lee Roth used to put out, the Beastie Boys, and stuff like that, where there was kind of like almost like a little theme, almost like a, it was almost like a little TV show in, in them, you know what I mean? That's kind of what this seems like. You get um, these, these, these parts, these panels, these books, each one of these stories kind of talking, uh, going along with this, uh, the album, and um, telling the story of, how the person who's writing the story, how the song made them feel, the album or whatnot made them feel at, 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 at the time or what it makes them feel uh, right now or in this moment or and, and things like that. 
And it's very cool watching this book uh, progress along. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I did when I was uh, when I was reading this is I actually went through and I put on Anthrax's Among the Living album while I was uh, reading this. And I got to tell you, it matches so great. It matches so great. Like um, it brought like, especially when you get like here into Cotton Amash, where you see that you're they're stuck on a planet. They're stuck on this planet, this renegade planet, where to keep the planet going, to give it power and uh, so it don't break down or anything like that, these people have to mosh. Yeah, they're forced to mosh, and they're moshing. The energy uh, powers up, uh, powers these gods who keep everything. Like, it's crazy. It's pretty uh, pr pretty good stuff here. Um, you get in here, like, uh, you got I Am The Law here, written by Scott Ian, one of the guitar players of Anthrax, illustrated by Chris Weston, uh, colored by uh, Aladdin Collar. Uh, you get in here, and um, I'm talking about a lot of this, uh, just the stuff, and you kind of even get, like, a little Judge Dredd story. Now, uh, Anthrax is a band, uh, like, as far as I've always known, through uh, through being a fan of theirs, they're definitely into comic books. They definitely like Judge Dredd. They like their Stephen King. They like, you know what? A lot of the things, and it's something more people should do, I think, nowadays, too, is that one of the things they do is the, the things that they like, they pay homage to by either doing cover songs or they write songs about and different stuff like that. And Anthrax is definitely one of those bands who's been into a lot of this stuff, like pop culture kind of things, especially like comic books. And that's one of the things that's really so cool about getting into this book and reading it and just getting into this story, um, seeing these things kind of come to life because I get it. I get where this, uh, where a lot of these stories come from, a lot of this art, uh, just some very, very great stuff here. Um, there's a lot of great contributors on here. The last story in this book written by Rob Zombie. You also got a story in here written by Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Um, uh, again, just some very, very good stuff here. Like I'll show, you, I'll show you some of this crazy stuff that they came up with, like through uh, with with Rob Zombie's story. Let me show you. Let me see if I can find one of these good these good panels in here because there's just like yeah yeah here we go like like some of the, this is in the this is in the uh this is in the rob zombie store you got telly savalas there he's like job of the hut you got care <laughs> yeah dude I, i'm telling you this book has absolutely great art um can't really say great story time and the stories in it are good um but it, it's it's because they're following along these tracks and everything from Anthrax's 1986 album, 86, um, Among the Living, absolutely great album, great, great book here to go along with it. It's a companion if you get this book, and you definitely need to, especially if you're an Anthrax fan, get home, put on Among the Living, jam out, and read this comic book. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. But that's all I've got for my comic book reviews and my new comic books this week. Guys, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on all of these books, what you think about my reviews, and what comic books are you bringing home this week. What's on your comic book pull list? Let me know all those thoughts down in the comments below. We'll get here into the live chats and see what you are all doing here before we get and unbox this thing right here, this package that I just got in. Okay, so let's see who all we got here. We got my man, Chillmonger, in the house. My man, Chillmonger, in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Mike is fine. All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I was checking because, like, it was a little bit, like, I think I had it turned a little bit low. Like, usually, it, like, reaches into the yellow, not into the red. And it, was, it wasn't even reaching into the yellow. So, I think, like, at first, I think it was maybe just a smidge low. But thank you so much for being here, Chillmonger. Uh, we got my man, Mike Porter, my favorite Porter. Thank you so much for being here. Kendall from Normies to Nerds, what is up, my brother? Dude, I missed your live stream completely last night. Completely. Didn't even, didn't even see it. Didn't even see it. Um, wasn't really on my phone. I was here at the house, uh, barbecuing, uh, grilling some wings, hanging out with the kids, uh, you know, just doing some of that kind of stuff. Also just kind of just dealing with life, man, just dealing with, with life. You know, um, I was talking last week about my grandmother and, you know, uh, things that look, things aren't looking so good. Um, here in the next, here in the next couple of days, uh, <clears throat> There's going to be some big decisions made uh, regarding her. And soon, I mean, uh, we'll probably be missing some, maybe some videos and live streams coming up here uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, as I may have to make a pilgrimage back to Colorado um, for a week. 
Uh, so something definitely not looking forward to. Uh, something I'm, I'm like I said, I'm definitely sad about it. You're not going to see me here and get all, all, all uh, I'm not going to bog down uh, this fun and entertaining live stream that we're going to have here um, with things like that. But, you know, it's just something that comes naturally uh, in life. Death is a natural part of life. Um, no matter how much uh, you're, you're prepared for it, you think you're prepared for it or ready or anything like that, you never really are. Even even myself here, as much as I keep myself uh, kind of ready for these things, you know, knowing that my grandma is in her 80s, knowing that she's old, knowing that she's lived a long, great life still doesn't make it any easier. You know, especially when I have to take and uh, talk about some of these kinds of things to my kids. Um, that's when it really hits home is trying to explain it to the kids because because they don't understand. You know what I mean? And I think that's, you know, in trying to explain and express everything uh, to them. It's kind of what makes it harder, uh, even even for me as a parent and uh, trying to deal with those things. But regardless, thank you all so much for your uh, for your good thoughts, your good vibes. I know a lot of people have uh, have messaged me and I just said things here in the live streams and stuff. I greatly uh, do appreciate that. But Grandma, she's put in a good fight, but it looks like it's a fight that she is losing. And unfortunately, that's just where it's going to end up. Um, that's just life, man. That's just life. Uh, something we all go through. I know um, plenty of other people have lost uh, loved ones, uh, you know, in their life, you know, here over, uh, you know, maybe recently, uh, maybe it's been a while. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, and just know that uh, no matter what, you know, uh, in most in most cases, our loved ones are probably uh, in a better place. They're not having to go through some of the pain and suffering and maybe just some of the stress that we have to go through in our everyday lives. Believe me, there's plenty of us that could probably use a day of rest. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but these are really things uh, that are serious. It's just part of life. So don't let it get you too down. All right. All right. And that's where we're going to end it. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you guys so much. So um, let's let, let's get back here into the chat to see what everybody's saying. We got uh, Wookie Lives Matter says, can't say I noticed you were live. Uh, all right, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Wookie. Um, we got Reaper Man Reviews. What is up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Moss is a good one, man. I know you can't wait to read it. Will Morgan, my man. What is up? From Meta Egg, yes, um, yeah, I need to, yeah, I need to check out more of his Random Nautica adventures uh, as well. Star Wars Santa, thank you so much for being here as well. I was listening in on your live stream yesterday. We we're at the comic book shop doing the pull list and everything, and they're like, <laughs> uh, the guy Jeff that we're doing the pull list with and everything, you know, doing just uh, he, he was like, are they talking? <laughs> He's like, are they talking about Ahsoka? I'm like, yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, I was, I was kind of distracted in looking at something else, but yeah. Good stuff, man. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's see who else we got. We got Ashley here from the Widow. Thank you so much for being here as well. Um, shame, shame, shame. Covers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Will Morgan says, "Chances are you like boobies. I do. I do. But who doesn't? Who doesn't? Don't make me get into. Don't make me get into some lines from. No, no. no you know, I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it." Because we're going to be doing some watch-alongs. Uh, probably, we'll probably do our first watch-along tonight. We'll do a live stream tonight here for channel members only. We're going to go through and start watching. Cl I'm serious. We're going to actually do it this time. We're going to actually do it this time. We're going to sit down and watch Clerks. We're going to hang out. We're going to commentate about it. Come through and hang out. If you are one of the channel members, uh, you'll be able to interact in the live chats and stuff that we're going to do here uh, on the channel. On the channel. So make sure that you go and, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. Make sure that... You Make sure you become one of the immortal Myrtle Maniacs. You can do the watch along with us and chat and have a good old time. If not, you're going to just be sitting there watching. You're going to be sitting there watching me, watching TV, talking with all the great Myrtle Maniacs in the chat. Um, and tonight we'll first watch Clerks. Clerks number one. <laughs> Now, the reason we're doing some of this is uh, here in a few weeks, I'm going to be over on Fan Jexter's channel, my man Adam. Uh, I'm going to be over there and we are going to be debating... We are going to be debating the uh, best Kevin Smith movies on Debate 8. So make sure that if you guys aren't subscribed to Fanjecture, make sure that you go check out his channel. Subscribe. He's got the best show on YouTube. Uh, it's fun. It's interactive. You got to go do it. I just dropped a link. Should be a link there in the chat for you guys to go and check out. But uh, I am a cover art whore. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's so rough. It's, it's like, especially when you're trying to cut back, man. Especially when you're trying to cut back. Um, let's see. Who else we got? Oh, no spamming in the chat, Mike. What are you doing, Mike? Eric Rigsby, thank you so much for being here. My man, what is up? I hope you're doing good. Um, my <laughs> bacon ain't in. No, no. Nikki Nikki, thank you so much for being here. Checking her Myrtle bit. Yes. 
Thank you so much for being here. Um, nice. Have you read Baby Teeth yet? And what are you waiting for? I read Baby Teeth issue number 17. I haven't read the rest of the series, but I will be uh, probably going back and uh, reading and reviewing that. Uh, I try. I tried to order Anthrax album through the mail, and the FBI showed up. What the? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Like, hey, where are you getting this Anthrax in the mail? <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's funny. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Very nice. Uh, Will Morris says the body. I'm pretty sure at, apt and the body are in the same book. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah apt pupil and the body. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, I'm a Stephen King nerd. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you know what? You know what's funny is like, I think it was back in the day too, like uh, the book The Stand. I was kind of inspired to read that, maybe by Anthrax. Can't remember if I was, but I was reading, like, I, I read The Stand. I think I got three quarters of the way through that piece of, I got three quarters of the way through that book. I read, I'm like, dude, this book is so great. I haven't read, like, hardly any fiction since then. Fiction, like, li like just plain books, not comic books. I haven't read any fiction since then. <laughs> Like he ruined it for me, but he kind of like made it the best also, if that makes any sense. But yeah, awesome, Will Morgan. Awesome. Love me some Stephen King, but uh, his son, Joe Hill, is the true king of horror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't read any of the Joe Hill books neither, and I've heard they're great. I heard they're great. Um, let's see. Also, say, oh, Chuck Keyworth, what is up? Uh, yeah, black and white or noir style newsprint. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and here's the thing. I'm totally forgiving. I don't even care if you still charge the $3.99 for it, if it's cheap or whatnot. I don't care. Just put a black and white book on newsprint. There's absolutely no reason to have it on on some of these on some of these pages that they're putting it on. Yeah. Um, what's a music video? What did they play them on a on a TV or <laughs> yeah, right? Poop, poop, says Black Angus. Poop, poop mouth, poop mouth. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Um yeah, Second Street Metalhead, absolutely. Absolutely, I am a metalhead all the way. Through and through. Um, the newsprint is great for black and white horror stories, absolutely. Oh, that rap reaction you did. What the hell did I watch? Oh, I must have missed this rap reaction. <laughs> watch this other videos though, man. I was dying. I was dying on this on the JJ Abrams one, man. Great stuff. Great stuff. And if you guys haven't subscribed to Chillmonger, make sure you go check out his stuff too uh definitely good stuff uh what book is oh was that oh what book is this that must have been the anthrax book uh black angus joe hill is actually a badass uh comic writer um right too king's son is a king of superhero uh superhero horror comics right 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 very yeah definitely definitely um this is some jacksonville street nonsense that is blown up what and thank you, Mike Porter. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, no way in hell you come to Colorado without stopping by. You know what, Will Morgan? You may have Will Morgan. You may have to pick me and my family up at the airport. You may have to pick us up at the airport and pick us up. Um, uh, go on tour or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Alois, thank you so much for being here, and I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Um. There's a comic book of Wraith as well. I want to... Wait, a Wraith? You mean like... Wait, 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 wait. Wraith? What? What do you mean a comic book of Wraith? Huh? I must have missed that. I must have missed that. I have to get some great after work entertainment. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and as I said, we'll probably go... We'll probably do it probably tonight about 8, 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I may go earlier, um, you know, just got the kids and kids and stuff like that. But yeah, we may, we may end up going, we may end up going earlier. Might end up going at six. Uh, definitely going to make sure that I do it after Adam's stream tonight over on Fan Jecture. Definitely going to uh, uh, do it after his, after his show tonight. And I can't remember who, uh, what, who, who are they debating tonight? Are they doing... Are they doing Harrison Ford movies this week? I think they're doing Harrison Ford uh, movies on Debate 8 this week, which I think, um, I believe Lavis Blackman is going on again for that. It's going on uh, to Debate 8 uh, this week. Um, yeah. Yeah, Clerks. Yeah, that's a great one, Nikki. Nikki, one of my favorites. And we'll probably, like, I'll probably watch that. I'll probably pop in the uh, 10th anniversary one. Yeah. And, yeah. 
So, Scotty, what is up from Hawks Holocrons? I hope you are having a very good day as well. That tonight, uh, uh, just hop in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, it would be tonight. Let's see. Uh, debate 8 is the best. Fanjecture fan subs are way too... Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, like, seriously, like, Fanjecture, like, his, his channel, like, he should easily... He should easily have, like, two, maybe three zeros added on to the end of his subscriber count right now should easily have one to two more zeros added on to the end of it. Great show. Great show. Plus Adam's just a great dude, man. Adam's just a great dude. Love his show. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, water is still wet. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Dad laughing. Yeah, that was a good one. Yo, where's head team Tusk at best Kevin Smith film period. Dang. He even came in and said period. Dang, he spelled that shit right. Scotty was like, damn, boom. You know what, honestly, I'm pretty sure Tusk is the one I've seen. I'm pretty sure, I see, I'm pretty sure I've seen Tusk and Red State. And I gotta be honest with you, Tusk and Red State are both, both good films. They really are. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to check out Adam's bracket and see what's gonna be on the on, on the debate eight, what, what movie's gonna be on there. But I can guarantee you, like, I mean, he barely has eight films. I think, what is he at? Like 11 or 12, I think. I think he's like at 12. So there's not very many that like have to like be picked out of the bunch. Like, I mean, like what's not going to be on the bracket? I mean, like I would say the not contenders are probably going to be like Yoga Hosers. Um, uh, yoga Hosers. Uh, what was that other one? Uh, Jersey Girl. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know how everybody's voting, but those two like seem kind of, you know, and I think Tusk and Red State would probably make the chopping block too. And I got to be quite honest with you. I honestly think one of those could make it even over Jay and Silent Bob Reboot if Jay and Silent Bob Reboot makes the cut. But I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to see. And, and I say that, and I say that knowing that some of the people who go in to vote for some of the movies on those brackets have ass, ass opinions. <laughs> Hey, hey, I, I, hey, if you vote in his things, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's true. Did you see that bracket last week? Did you? Who the hell puts a Samuel L. Braxton, uh, a Samuel L. Braxton, a Samuel L. Jackson bracket, and you don't have Shaft on there? You don't have Shaft. You don't even have the long kiss goodnight. But you got like garbage movies that he did, and I'm like, bruh. You don't even have the negotiator on there. The negotiator with Samuel L. Jackson. What? Was it Kevin had? Is it because it had Kevin Spacey in it? Everyone's like, "Oh hell no, we can't put this movie in there. It's got Kevin Spacey in it." Nah, I don't know. Maybe so. Nah, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> sorry. The uh, the Wrath from Nosferatu. Oh, I've never seen it. Never seen it. Okay, the oh the Wrath. I said the Wraith. The Wraith. Okay. Um, is it the Wrath or the Wraith? The Wrath or the Wraith? You get you got me. Yeah. That is funny though, uh, Hawks to Holocrons. That's 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 one of those rare ones. Tusk. I'm I'm, I'm glad to see somebody will put put that in there. Chillmox is still drying off. Oh man, that's funny. Um, are you are you coming to Denver and I'll scoop you up in a heartbeat. Nice. Well, you got you got to have room for five of us because we've got five of us. We got me, my wife, and my three kids. <laughs> LB, what is up, my man? Because I am here. Yeah, debate eight is absolutely awesome. I uh, totally agree. Adam needs a lot more subscribers. Yeah, yeah, like way more, way more. Like if I'm telling you, if you're here on this channel right now, go. I pin the comment up there. Go subscribe to Fanjecture and be there tonight. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great time. Um, that is unless uh, unless Lavis didn't watch the movies. You know what I'm talking about. There's this point. Last week, talking about Samuel L. Jackson movies. And a debate came up. <laughs> like, this motherfucker literally said, like, look, these two movies are Samuel L. Jackson movies, and they both got Samuel L. Jackson in it, and you go into them, and it's Samuel L. Jackson being Samuel L. Jackson, doing his Samuel L. Jackson thing, doing a Samuel L. Like, Bruh. Are you kidding me, bro? Is that that's your argument? 
these two are saying, like, I know what we're debating is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Somebody in there saying, hey, be not. Look, I bust Lavis's chops all the time. That's what I get paid to do. Maybe I don't get paid to do it, but still, it's fine. <laughs> Vagabond Ninja, thank you so much for being here. Just got here. What's up? Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure that you check your Myrtle bit. Yeah. Check your Myrtle bit. Um, yeah. Reboot has my vote number one. Can oh, no. Dude, what? what? Rigged? Yeah. Home of the rigged, home of the rigged voting show. <laughs> The film made me cry every time I watch it and laugh and cry every more. Yeah, I pro I need to watch it again. That's for sure. I need to watch it again. Yeah, Samuel Braxton. No, it's Samuel L. Braxton. What that is, is it's Tony Braxton and Samuel L. Jackson mixed together. So. <laughs> Samuel L. Braxton. You don't want to hear the songs from Samuel L. Braxton. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm laughing just thinking of Samuel Braxton. <laughs> Samuel Braxton. That's funny. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, Long Kiss Goodnight is a good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Rampage. Uh, wow. <laughs> no way. Rampage? What? What a miss. Uh, things turn. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Dun, dun. Uh oh. I'm going to get a copyright claim for that. Uh, Charlie Baltimore. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, still so on Christopher Walken being <laughs> beating Christopher Lee. What's he been doing lately? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, as I say, if you don't know, I, I'm telling you, if you, like, you got to join, you got to go and subscribe to Fan Jackson because you're missing out on some of the greatest stuff ever. Like, why? <laughs> like, why isn't Christopher Lee in more movies? <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll never forget, I'll never forget, I'll never forget Sansa's reaction to that. <laughs> So it's like, oh, 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 he's dead. Dude, like, I don't know how many times I went back and watched that, bro. I was dying. <laughs> he's dead. I need to stop. I better stop. I gotta stop right now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he says, you got that full game locked down, fam. Oh, which one? Which one? Which full game? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for being here. Biggie Shaq, guys, make sure you go check out New World, New World Order Comics as well, man. Biggie Shaq, he does, man, he does these great videos where he, like, this, this, this dude don't give a shit. He puts on his phone, he puts on his live stream, he's driving around, you're gonna be driving around, cruising with him, he's smoking his spleefs, it might be cigarettes, cruising, and then he's gonna go long box diving in his local comic book shops, it's great, dude, like, very funny and entertaining. Um, plus, Biggie's just funny and entertaining. He's a big wrestling uh, fanatic. Go to his show. Always funny, dude. This like this dude will make you laugh. I can guarantee it. Um, I'm here to chew bubblegum <laughs> shit on indies, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, the Wraith is the world's worst in Nosferatu. The best. Oh, okay. All right. All right. The Wraith? Okay, the Wraith. Okay. Um, but seriously, House by Lake sounds like a, a, a woman's product. It does. It does. It does. Oh, we got Vagabound Ninja became one of the immortal Myrtle Maniacs. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member of Vagabound Ninja. Greatly appreciate that. At the digital copy, thank you so much for becoming one of the immortal Myrtle Maniacs. Immortal, immortal Myrtle Maniacs. Let's hear it down in the chats for our new immortal Myrtle Maniac. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, if, Braxton, if, Bra if Braxton and Jackson had a kid, it would be one motherfucking cute kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so how did Star Wars Santa... Well, I, I can't laugh like Star Wars Santa. I just... Like, his just reaction was... Because <laughs> he kind of does, does his ho-ho thing, but he's like... Oh. <laughs> it was so great. It was so great. <laughs> I need to clip that. I've got, I probably got the clip somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, check, check in the... Check in the house. Hi, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Biggie Shack. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, Adam is so fixed it. Yeah, on the CGI water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CGI water, man. A CGI water. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, so before we end the show here, I, I want to do this unboxing here. I got this. Uh, I just got this uh, package in the mail yesterday. I wasn't sure who it was from. I'm like, I got a, I got a notification from UPS saying, hey, 
you got some stuff coming your way, Trinity. And I'm like, hey, what the hell? I didn't order anything. At least not that I know of. I mean, I've got some other stuff that I'm waiting on to come in the mail for sure. But I'm still, I, like, I wasn't for sure what it was. And, you know, Amazon showed up and I thought it was uh, my daughter's Amazon order. But I'm like, why would it be through UPS and not on Amazon? Well, um, she got her stuff in. She got her book from Rebecca Zamula, one of some YouTuber here. Um, she got hers in, but I didn't get mine in. The UPS guy ended up showing a little bit later. And I got this box in here from our good friend, Aggressively Relaxing. Let's get this in here and see what he sent, what he sent to us. See what we've got here. All right, we got this open. He's got in a nice Gemini mailer and some bubble wrap around it as, oh my God. Oh my God, okay, let's check this out. Dang, look at that. First, I like it, I like it. We got the Uncanny X-Men issue number 232. Dude, sweet, sweet. I don't have a whole lot of the, a whole lot of back issues. But that's pretty badass, man. And I do have, I do actually have some un some uncanny X Men to that I can add that to. Um, we've also got Hawkeye Freefall issue number five. Yes, written by uh, Matthew Rosenberg. I have uh, this series also as well. Um, pretty decent series. Um, also, right here we've got Firepower issue number one. This is the f this is the free comic book day uh, version of this uh, as well. Um, which I actually, I actually have a, a copy of this as well. Firepower, pretty good series by Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman is a good uh, writer. He relies a lot on tropes and stuff like that, but that's okay. That's okay. Because he takes the tropes and he does kind of add to them. Like watching Invincible and then even getting into this Invincible compendium that I bought. Uh, I've read, I've been a few, a few uh, issues into it. I'm like, wow, you know, like Robert Kirkman, like, and I think I heard somebody else say it too. Like Robert Kirkman wrote an updated and better spider-man and that's kind of what invincible is and i'm like yeah it, it kind of really is it kind of really is now everybody let's do a drum roll in the chat you know maybe i should get maybe i should go get my snare and sit here and do a little drum roll really quick i do have i do have my drum set right up over right over there but here is what we have got uh today ladies and gentlemen this is coming to us from aggressively relaxing this man is uh, the uh, internet's, the world's most successful crowdfunded comic book creator. He wrote the most successful uh, comic book, uh, crowdfunded comic book about vacuums. And this is Suck It Up, Old Man. This is Suck It Up, Old Man. Um, this is issue number one. I'm not sure if he's going to be doing a follow-up uh, series uh, to this, to uh, issue number one. But this is the book uh, you can see uh, right there. Got your cover, main cover right there. Check that out. Uh, wow, this is actually uh, has some very... The quality on this is actually very good. It's got a nice cardstock, uh, cardstock cover in here. And I would say, actually, these pages in here are actually a nice, damn aggressively relaxing. I think I'm going to have to reach out to you when I finally uh, decide to make a comic book and see where you got this thing printed at um, because this is actually seems like a very uh, good quality, um, well put together book here. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you haven't, make sure that you go check out Aggressively Relaxing and um, support his crowdfunded comic book. Uh, just some really uh, very good stuff. Now, there is one last thing in here, guys, and I, I just li like I didn't even know, but I, like, I just uncovered this after I after I seen the suck it up old man. I'm like, this is great, guys. Tonight, all right. I already said we're going to be doing a watch long of Jan uh, of Clerks of Clerks one, but look at this, dude. This is freaking great. This is freaking great. Jay and Silent Bob chasing Dogma, dude. Dude, like. You've got me. This is a freaking comic book of Jay and Silent Bob? That's cool, man. That's cool. Definitely adding this to my collection. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Love his films. Um, 
and just what he's done. I, you know, honestly, I've never really read any of his comic books or anything. But uh, seeing this, man, like I, I can't wait to read this thing um, and get in here and check this all out. It's all in black and white. Man, look at that. That that's pretty freaking sweet, man. You know, got this. Like, you want to talk about an A OK? You want to talk about an A OK, which is an act of kindness, man. That people uh, in the comic community do. This is freaking great, man. This is freaking great. I don't know, like, I don't know if I can express how awesome this is and how much I appreciate this. Uh, aggressively relaxing, I greatly appreciate that, man. This is, this is badass. Damn. Now I feel like an asshole. <laughs> now I feel like an asshole. I can't give away this cool shit. I can't give away this cool shit, but Anyway, guys, that's all I have for today's comic book reviews, my comic book haul, and even this aggressive unboxing. Um, guys, like I said, if you're not already, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure that if you would like to support the channel even further that you follow the link down in the description where you can become one of the immortal Myrtle Maniacs. Become immortalized as one of the Myrtle Maniacs and uh, helping support the channel tonight, we are going to be doing a watch along of Clerks. The, I think it's the 20th anniversary edition. So make sure you're there for that. We got, oh, and look, he, 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 he got here right at the very end. But that's all I have for this video today, folks. Thank you all so much for being here on Second Street Marvel. You all have a very good day. Have a great rest of your week. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to become one of the immortal mortal maniacs so you can be here tonight and interact as we go through and we do a watch along of Clerks. Kevin Smith's breakout premiere movie from 1994. We'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Have a good day. Later.